Welcome to Hair Hero, the podcast where we dive deep into the minds of the best in the business to uncover what makes them tick and sometimes what makes them twitch. I'm your host, Ryan Whedon, founder of Masters of Balayage and creator of Masters Academy. Join me each week for impactful conversations with industry leaders, icons, influencers, and trendsetters. Get ready to be inspired, learn from the pros, and maybe even have a laugh or two. Because let's face it, if we can't have fun talking about hair, we're doing it wrong. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I have got an incredible guest here today, which you probably know who it is if you're reading the title of this episode before you listen to me. But if you don't, she is someone that has a, a podcast, a very popular podcast in our hair industry that I've had the pleasure of being on twice, which for those of you that have been on a podcast, you know how nice it is to be invited to a podcast, but I was actually invited back because we just had more to talk about. And, and, and then I was invited also to be a, an educator at her retreat. This is none other than the amazing Elizabeth Fay, who is the founder of the Hair Love and Vitality Project, uh, founder and CEO of Hair Love University, fellow podcaster and industry thought leader, speaker, and coach. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. Yay. And I get to be at your retreat. I know. Isn't it nice to actually be on the other side of the microphone? I mean, you have a microphone, but you're not that one that's responsible for act asking the great questions. Yes. No, it is <laughs> nice to be on the just the the easy side of the podcast. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, you're right. We've got two events, yours and mine, the, the Hair Love Retreat, and then a mob hero event in San Diego, which are one, uh, they're not even a weekend apart. They're, they're consecutive weekends. So yeah. you, I'm going to, I'm going to be at yours and then you're going to be coming to mine just several days later, not even less yep. than a week later. Uh, and I'm so excited. Well, first of all, I've never even um, been to St. George, right? That's where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you're Yeah. Southern Utah. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've heard about it. I've seen posts and, and videos and shots of it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's so pretty. And it looks like we're near Zion National Park. So it's like mm -hmm. those big red rocks. And if you've ever seen photos of like, you know, Southern Air, like Arizona or Utah, it looks like that. So we're near Zion National Park. And so it's so, so, so pretty. Kind of looks like Star Wars land. Like it's just cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and, and what is, the, what should I expect there? I mean, yeah. I know it's, I see a lot of yoga. I see a lot of, it's health and wellness driven. Um, I know we're going to, there's going to be some, some technical education as well, some business education. Um, yeah. It seems like a very Zen peaceful experience. Is that, am I on the right track? Yeah. It's a life changing experience. We have signature things we've done every year, every time that are kind of like signature hair love experiences. Um, we were founded in 2017. So we've done a lot of events, mm -hmm. um, you know, in this way and hair love has always been broken into our three pillars, wellness, beauty, and business. And so we have a day for each of them and everything's community driven. Um, our learning environments are different than other learning environments. That's something like we really pride ourselves in is like really cultivating rooms where transformation can happen. That's why we choose our certain venues or the way that we do things and structure things. We have something called escape to learn as one of our learning concepts. So we really want to take you out of your element, put you in different types of situations and cultivate like this safe playground for learning, for asking questions, for growing, for masterminding. So, you know, our first day is all about community connection. It's all about intention, coming together. That's like our evening. Mm -hmm. Our next day is all the wellness stuff. So that's like hiking Zion. We're going to cold plunge. We'll do like a oh, fireside wow. night. It's like, I was telling my event planner today, I'm like, it's like, camp for adults, but like, you know, a lot of us are like 40 years old and want to be comfortable. So it's like mm, yeah. kind of the mixture of like, <laughs> I want to camp, but like not like in a sleeping bag. Like I want like a proper cabin and a bed, but I also mm. like want to connect with people and have bougie food. And so it's kind of like yeah. glamping, like everything has, at least this year, AC, we've had some years where it's like more Burning Man style, but right. um, it's a little bit more of like a festival. Um, it's like more like a proper retreat or a festival, like something you'd go, you're off grid, you're out in a different place. Um, you're really immersed fully in the experience. There's no driving to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Like it's really is a retreat in that aspect. Um, so that day will all be wellness. The next day is business. We'll do some breath work, but then we have business classes all day, masterminding sessions, panels. We have some signature hair love experiences that we do in the evening that are like kind of rituals or ceremonies of intention building. We have some personal development things we do every year that are kind of like 
people expect and come to know. And then our last day is craft focus. So it's like actual technique education. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we will have you Mm -hmm. and we'll have a few other amazing um, artists coming in. And then every year we have like a proper DJ festival dance party where we like just dance under the stars, you know, all the things, but we, we know how to throw a really good party. Um, Our retreats more holistic in the sense of like, it's a pretty dry retreat. There's not like a lot of alcohol. I think we have one or two nights where we drink Mm. light if you want to optional, but it's like a little more health focused. Um, It's more about like being present and connecting and building relationships, going to bed at a decent hour. Um, So it's, yeah, it's got like a little bit more of that vibe. It's it's life changing. It's a life changing experience. You get people like you coming, influencers, educators, people out of school, salon owners, like just different parts of the industry come together to really support each other and grow. That's amazing. Yeah, Hero Hero is it's you know it's another very cool event, um, life changing in, in its own in its own right. Uh, but we have got our after party on Sunday night after the whole thing's over, and, and yeah, there's people get bombed at the open bar. So that's fine. <laughs> we're no, party it's like fine. a hairdresser. <laughs> no, and it's we're just in the middle of nowhere. Do you right. know what I mean? Like yeah. it wouldn't even be safe. Like. So I think they're just different. We actually have some people coming to both, which is huh. so – I keep telling That's people, so I'm cool. like, come here with us and then come here with us because they'll be totally different you education. You should have chartered a bus or something. You jump on the bus and, and go – That would have been fun. <laughs> like a party bus. Right. Yeah. Right. Just get the big Volkswagen vans from yours to, to ours. That would be um, so fun. Yeah. So really important question. You said there's no Starbucks. There's no Starbucks. Um, so how do we – caffeinate ourselves in the morning (laughs) we have a private chef (laughs) who is actually he's a celebrity chef so literally our event planner and our chef are celebrity planners like Mm -hmm. our event planner does like brenda burchard events like huge biohacking and wellness Uh events like she's we're small fries like compared to her clients she just loves us and what we're doing and our chef is the same thing he cooks for like freaking like bmw events and Mm -hmm. like Patagonia, like huge corporate events. And he Mm. actually specializes in a lot of them. They have to like cook outside. Like he had to like hike in for like Nike or these different events, like their cookers and their stuff. Mm. So he's like, he owns like four huge famous restaurants down here through Zion and like Bryce and like some of the big national parks. Um, so he's cooked for us totally off grid before he's had to build his own kitchens before. And this year he's going to love us. We have a real kitchen, but he, he does all the coffee, all the mocktails, all the cocktails, all the food. Like mm-hmm. he's insane. The food is That's like incredible. People are like, I come for the food. Like the food yeah. is like ridiculously good. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I can't wait to, to taste it. And, so there's uh, coffee. There's plenty yeah, of coffee. There's plenty of coffee, right? I'm, 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 I like the, the the cocktails, the mocktails. I mean, it's, this guy sounds legit. I can't he's wait to, great. to get there. You'll love Chef Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I got to ask the, the most cliche question um, that we – ask pretty much any hairstylist on this show we've got to start there because we, we it's it's about getting to know yeah. who we're talking to it's about finding that relatability because we're all in the journey uh, of trying to achieve a higher level uh, yeah. i think anybody that's listening to this show anyway yeah. you know we're, we're all we're all trying to be the best that we can um and it's, it's hard sometimes to look on social media and see people doing things that you wish you were doing or on stages that you wish you were on uh, reaching accomplishments that you maybe don't think it's even possible for you. Of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We don't see what happens in everyday life. And it, are they really happy? Are they really doing these things? Like, what did it take to get there? Yeah. Uh, so I, I like to just open up the question, like, h- how did you get started with hair? Because yeah. some people were born into it as a as a child, you know, straight out of the womb. And, and some people like me just fell into it for lack of anything else to do. And I'm just, and then then fell in love with it that way. So I would love to hear your story. Yeah, no, I love that. When, before I share my story, I think wherever your journey is taking you in this industry and in your life, like you said, there's so many ups and downs and curves and redirections in everybody's lives. And I think that we just, when we start to really embrace those and see that it's life is the journey Mm -hmm. and nobody's gotten where they've gotten overnight, like, I've been doing what I've been doing since 09. Like, you know, like it's been a compounding effect. And sometimes the little um, efforts we put in or the risk we take or the failures, the wins, they add up over time. And so 
um, you know, I think just trust it. Like I never thought the things I'd be doing, like I didn't even desire to do these things, nor did I even think they were options. And some of them weren't, I made them options. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just like, you only have the vision for what you can see. So I always think like, just do the next right thing. The thing that's calling you, like take those step forwards, go to the events, meet the people, take care of that client, like Mm -hmm. show up for your family. And like, it all adds up and it's, it's going to be beautiful. But Mm -hmm. You know, for me, the hair industry has been such a saving grace, honestly, and it has afforded me opportunities that someone like me would have never have had. And I think our industry is one of the most abundant industries in the world. I think it's one of the best industries in the world. I think there's so many places to go in it. You could get into, I mean, you could be a salon like centric rep and sell product if you like sales. You could own a distribution. You could own a chain of salons. You could own a spa. You could be a teacher. You could, at a school, you could own a school. You could be an artist. You could start a hair podcast. You could do a hair course, like, or five of those things. And the, you could start a product line. You could specialize in the health and wellness side of hair or be a barber or extensions or, I mean, there's so much stuff you can do. It's like, Mm-hmm. It's just an endless, you know, possibilities here. And I think that we get to be artists, we get to serve people, and you can make it be a side gig, you can make it be an empire, or you can make it be a career. I think it can be flexible with seasons of your life. Like when I owned a salon, I had girls having babies making what people make full time working, and they were making it two and a half days a week. Uh-huh. And then I had girls working five days a week making like what doctors make. Like the possibilities are crazy. And that's just some of the like, traditional possibilities that we think of. So I just want to say that is I've had the blessing, the opportunity, and the honor of being in a lot of sides of our industry. And I think they're all great. Like I just think they're different and it's cool. And I look forward to new sides I get to be in as I grow. But um, my background, just a little bit of context, I've been a licensed cosmetologist. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I started in the industry in 09. I was a hairdresser behind the chair for 10 years. And obviously, I'm going to share some timelines. They are overlapping timelines. Um, I was a salon owner for seven, and I was a beauty school teacher for four. I was a part-time at night, learning leader at the Paul Mitchell schools. Um, That's how I got my start was in the Paul Mitchell side of things. I was with Redken for six years of that. I've done a lot of independent education, corporate education, been at commission salons, owned a salon, had it be a few different Mm -hmm. business models. So I've tried out a lot of things, you know, to just, and I've liked them all. Some I liked better than others. Um, That's a little bit of my background. What I do now is I am a full-time educator. I've been in full-time education for five years, but I was educating while also doing ownership and being behind the chair for many years. And I run Hair Love, like you said, Hair Love's an education company um, for the beauty industry. And I speak, I coach, I host retreats. So that's what I do now, long story short, but I am a licensed cosmetologist and my so much of my work is dedicated to the betterment of our industry and what we do. But long story short, I got into the industry and Ryan, you haven't heard my founder story? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm excited to tell you. It's, <laughs> it's just kind of a wild story. Okay, um, can't wait. So I got into the industry because I was a troubled kid. I was such a punk you? kid. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like the worst of the worst. So I had a crazy childhood. Um, I ended up living with different families from 12 years old to 16. And then I was a high school dropout at 16. I was in a different school almost every year. Um, drugs, drinking. I grew up in Vegas. Really easy to get in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like hurting myself. Didn't always want to be here. Like I mm-hmm. I was really trying to like find my way in life. Um So I had just a really, really rocky childhood. And then I had a really rocky teenage years. And um, in that span of that time, I had a school I was going to that I was at to hopefully get some help. And I hated it so much. I wanted to get kicked out. And they had a rule that if you had distracting, like bright colored hair or funky hair, you would get expelled. (laughs) So I ended up stealing box color from Walmart and making my hair as distracting and like scene cut as I could. Obviously, I'm not a hairdresser at 12. Like it does not look good, but it was plenty distracting. And I got expelled. And so I was waiting for my parents to pick me up. And I had a woman hand me a business card. And this was one of those moments, you know, I have so many moments like this in my life. And I know everyone listening does too. And I think of these moments like the dots on our star map of our life. Mm -hmm. If that thing wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be who I am today. 
you know, be it good, be it bad, be it you lost a job, you brought your heart broke or good things, right? If I wouldn't have met that mentor, whatever that was, or gone to that event or said yes to that, taking that risk, I wouldn't be who I am. And this was one of those moments for me. And she tapped me on the shoulder, handed me a business card, and it was for a hairdresser. And it said, um, the Robert Cromin Salon, Mandalay Bay. And for those of you who don't know who Robert Cromin is, he's kind of like a big Sassoon figure in the Paul Mitchell world. He's an iconic platform hairdresser, famous, famous salon. Means nothing to a 12-year-old, right? (laughs) So I'm like, Robert Cromin Salon. Okay. So I book an appointment and I go to the salon and you will meet my father at Hair Love. He was a blue collar worker, did welding for the city all day during the day, leads yoga at the YMCA at mm-hmm. night, um, is part of the Mormon church and leads youth, of, youth events. And we live in the hood growing up. So yeah. our church was not like a Utah Mormon church. It was like a where people go because they don't, they can't buy food mm-hmm. and their kids need help. So my dad does a lot, a lot of charity work and he leads nature walks and hikes on the weekends. He's like a proper mountain man. He can tell you how to use anything medicinally mm-hmm. to help you. So that's the guy who wears either a blue jumpsuit or overalls. He takes me in his overalls to the Mandalay Bay. We go in. I'm like, yes, queen. <laughs> this is where I belong. And my dad's huh. like, this is not where my credit card belongs. Oh, my God. And so I get my hair done. Uh-huh. I love it. My dad is livid about the price of it. He's like, you're right. never coming back. This mandatory color correction was not in the budget. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I will do whatever it takes to pay you back. And I am coming back, so I'll do whatever it takes to earn back the money. So I do that for six months. Six months later, I come back to the salon with a wad of cash, and I put it on the table. And I'm like, okay, Brandon, what can I get for this much? And he's like laughing. He's like, where the heck have you been? What is this? And I'm like, this is my dad is mad at you, and I had to work really hard to pay him back and come back here. And he's like, I'm going to go chat with your dad. So he has a talk with my dad, Uh and they both come back, and they have a deal for me. If I would come back to the salon with better grades on a report card, he would do my hair complimentary moving forward. What? Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> and I said yes, and he did that for me until I was 16. So then were you were you able to get back into school? Um, so or did I went you go back to a different to, school? I still was a troubled kid. <laughs> it right, didn't fix right. everything. But it was a way that I – was willing to try a little harder. I was willing to do something a little bit more. And I would get my haircut, bring my report card, get my haircut, Uh do the report card for years. And at 16, I ended up dropping out of high school. And I said, Hey, I don't have a report card today. I can't do school anymore. Like I just Mm -hmm. can't do this. And he said, how about a job? And I became a hair assistant. Brandon, this, this, this hero named Brandon. (laughs) Who is this guy? <laughs> so he's actually not in the industry anymore, but he's just okay. a sweetheart. He was like an angel in my life. Um, uh-huh. And the man who actually managed the Robert Cromine salon, his name was Kelly Cardenas. And he ended up opening up his own salon. And he was my first boss. And Kelly. Kelly was? Gave, yeah. Kelly was my boss at 16. So I worked for Kelly for three years. And he what? made me tell this story on stages around the world. Uh-huh. Um, and that was how I got into the industry. They were like, hey, what? I'll tell you what. Less drugs and you have a job. And I went right. and got black clothes. Uh-huh. I showed up to work. I started working for free and for tips, and it turned into a full career. And uh-huh. um, that's that was the start of my career. And it really taught me from the beginning the power of mentorship, mm-hmm. the power of being in the right rooms, the power that we have to change our own lives, and the power of what we do. Because right. what was it that changed my life? It wasn't the haircut. Mm -hmm. It was the way I felt in a salon. It was the space that was held for me. And so that's been our whole message is hairdressers change the world. And we Mm -hmm. know this because the hairdresser changed my world. And you are a part of the ripple effect. And what you do is bigger than what you do. It's how you make people feel. You make people feel heard, seen, and loved. And when you are phenomenal at what you do, when you run your business like a business, when you take care of yourself and you're well, you get to do the life-changing thing that no one else can do in the way that you do it. And that's really what we do at the end of the day. We think we're in beauty, we're in people. Like that your business is people. And so that's been our my message uh-huh. for years. It's evolved from me teaching hair to then me being a business coach to then me being self-care, but it's the same at the end of the day. It's when I help someone in this industry, I know that I'm a part of a ripple effect because I know how much the impact 
society and their communities one person at a time. And it's a big deal. And then you work with the salon owner and they impact their own team and their team impacts their entire community. And it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. And so that's my founder story. Uh-huh. That's It's kind of a crazy story. It's literally been a, a thread in my life. Um, I've just been like, how can I make people feel heard, seen and loved? And that's what my whole Ted talk, I did a Ted talk about it. Mm-hmm. And it's the global idea of, you know, what beauty professionals do, but like, how can we learn something from that? Like, why do people trust their hairdressers so much? What is that thing? And it's the way they make Mm -hmm. someone feel. And it ends with the global idea of how can we build organizations and companies where people feel heard, seen, and loved? How can we parent and create, you know, a home where people feel heard, seen, and loved? How can whatever you do in the world, can you realize that what you do changes the world one person at a time and that we all have the power to make an impact by the little things we do? And so that's, you know, that's, right. that's what I do. That's yeah. what I do. I just help people change their lives so they can keep changing lives. Well, I love how you, the ripple effect um, makes all the sense in the world. And, and, and the, your message and your documentary about how uh, hairdressers, your, your TED Talk, how, they changed, how hairdressers can change the world. Because um, it, well, for, it changed your world, yeah. right? And then you're helping to change the world. So that ripple effect continues to to t- turn into like a wave, right? It's, yeah. Now it's this tidal wave that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And creates ripples along the way. Um, and, and you mentioned that w- when somebody goes to a hairdresser, there's just that that connection, that relatability for the person mm-hmm. in the chair versus the person doing your hair, where you don't really get that connection anywhere else. There's, so there's, no, there's no real corporate boundaries. You know, you're not talking to somebody in a suit over across fr- from a desk. It's like yeah. you can physically touch and hang out and get to know them. I mean, you, you can't have that same relationship with a, a doctor or, mm-hmm. um, uh, I don't know, somebody that works at a restaurant. Cause there's just not this, it's not the Even same a therapist. Like none of yeah. the people in your life, like it's different. It's yeah. just like, we do something really cool. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's rad. That's right. And Kelly, did you know, Kelly's going to be a hero. Oh yeah. I did yeah. see that actually. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I became good friends with Kelly because uh, he's not too far away from me. He's just down the, the street from me, um, and uh, we connected. Oh, really? A years ago? That's yeah, funny. I know. When he said his name, I was like, "No way, that guy!" Yeah, I, that I, guy. I, I did know that, and I didn't uh, think of that because I saw it on a graphic a while ago, and I was uh, like, "Oh, that's awesome!" Yeah, he's, he's the nicest, just sunniest guy you'll ever meet. No matter yeah. what's going no, on, no, he was in his my life, first he mentor. Finds the, finds the, finds the sunshine, and I love that. And, um, that's just so cool that he was your first mentor. Um, and then you, this whole, this journey into health and wellness is, I assume it it's started stemming from your childhood where you weren't taking care of yourself. You were going through a really hard, uh, dark time and were lost. And, and, and you, you don't, obviously it's a tough time to be going through that. And a lot of uh, teenagers go through that. I had my own share of yeah. um, darkness at that time and into early college uh, yeah. and, and we don't ever want somebody to feel that way because we know how dire it feels, how depressing, how, yeah. how sad of an existence it is when you don't have a mentor or somebody to, to pick you up when you're down. And I, that's another reason why I like to give back and, and help other people grow and guide people toward the light as opposed to, uh, you know, pull them away from, from, from darkness and negativity. Um, yeah. and, and then you have, you just recently launched one of the most, you probably say one of the most incredible projects of your life right the vitality yeah. project and and that's all based on putting health and wellness into the spotlight because we're yeah. so focused on skills training in cosmetology school and then beyond you need to get better at cutting you need to get better yeah. at coloring and and that's where the focus has been not on the actual health and wellness of ourselves so yeah. a lot of us are burnt out and we're we're pouring out from an empty glass and we have nothing left and Probably. So I'd love to hear more about how that stemmed, how that idea came about yeah. and, uh, and, and, and where it's going right now and in, in the future. Balayage, balayage, balayage. You know, it, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it. Your clients just want to know that you're good at it because they're paying a lot of money for your service. Sure, you can take a class here and there, search on YouTube, learn a hack here and there on Instagram, but it's never going to be enough because to excel at balayage, 
You need structured learning with experts that have been where you are and can show you how to reach your goals. Hi, I'm Ryan Whedon, founder of Masters of Balayage and one of the first balayage experts to bring modern balayage to millions. And right now, Masters Academy, the number one online trainer for balayage artists, is now offering lifetime memberships. That's right, no more monthly payments, no more overdrafts, just a one-time payment and you can get over 100 hours of balayage and blonding tutorials on demand to watch and rewatch on your time. Our new Masters Academy Lifetime Membership also includes our three world-famous certification programs, the Balayage Masters Program, the Blonde Masters Program, and the Extensions Masters Program. Not only do you get to own all three of these now, you also get Master Certified. So if you're stuck, lacking that balayage confidence, or just need an awesome excuse to raise your prices, Masters Academy is the answer. And right now, you can save $100 off any lifetime membership. Just go to www.mobmastersacademy.com and use code MYLIFE at checkout to redeem your $100 off promotion. I'm gonna say it again, so go grab a pen and write this down. Go to www.mobmastersacademy.com and use code MYLIFE and redeem your promotion now. Yeah, great questions. Well, you know, we've been doing a lot of stuff with Hair Love, and Hair Love has its own crazy cool founder story for another day. But um, it also started as a passion project, fun fact. <laughs> um but, you know, with Hair Love, we've been coaching and helping and working with amazing people like you and big brands and just to give back to the industry and hosting retreats and all the things. Um, but really what created Vitality was I hit a point in my life where I got really sick and I ended up, you know, I worked really hard my whole life. I hustled, I burned myself out, I pushed myself past my limits for years and years and years and I just kept going and I did not put self-care at the center of anything. I was like very much like that wounded leadership of like leaders eat last kind of mentality when like leaders need to eat first because leaders are the ones holding up the vision and working with their team. Like, you know, just a whole different approach to business I take now. But I really like, for lack of a better word, I coach thousands of people to hustle their faces off. Like mm -hmm. I had like, I had girl boss stickers. Like we were like the epitome of like, go, go, mm -hmm. go, never quit, never stop, never, you know? And mm -hmm. that energy was really hard behind the chair. It was hard as a salon owner, but I just thought it was the way it was. And, you know, we joke and laugh about a lot of these things in our industry and have memes. And I just think collectively our relationship with hustle needs to change. Hustle is a tool, not a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Hustle is a, a season, not a lifestyle. When it is a lifestyle, it is going to be um, the reason that you have a health crisis. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like you can have 99 problems. The second your health goes, you got one freaking problem. And your health is like the lifeline. Your vitality is the lifeline of your company. If you're not well, if you can't think clear, if you can't lead, if you can't, nothing works. Nothing works. And so I really like – was living a hustle lifestyle. I wasn't using it as a tool to start a salon. It was like I used it to start the salon. Then I used it to scale the salon. Then I used it to maintain the salon. When? When is the arrival point? At what point have you arrived and said, I must integrate peace into how I be in the world? I must integrate you know, flow and ease into my life and stop. I was waiting. I was waiting to get to some arrival point that I then get ease. I then get rest. I then get what I was working for. And here's the deal is success is not linear. There's ups and downs in everybody's businesses. There's years you make less money. There's years you make more money still in my career. This is part of being an entrepreneur. This is part of being in business. And so if you're an employee of a company, know that they go through ups and flows. So if the company is like tightening up budget or this or that, it's normal. It's part of a company. There's turnover. There's changes. Clients leave. They come. Staff leaves. So Instagram changes, social media, marketing. It's just life. Things ebb and flow. Things are seasonal. And, you know, so I really was building and growing. And then I got into coaching and teaching and owning a business and mentoring people, which is like even a deeper level of holding space. And so it really started to catch up with me. I ended up having a very serious health crisis and happened to talk about it on my Instagram and ask for help. And I got so sick, I couldn't even scroll on my phone. And I was bedridden. And I was like, I'm a mom. I'm young. I can't 
I run a company, like th- this is a problem. And at the same time, my life partner, who is now my husband, has struggled with serious depression. Uh, I've had a lot of people close to me have very serious mental health challenges. Um, he hit a rock bottom and, you know, a suicidal ideation and some ser- really, really serious things. And his SSRI stopped working. So f- if you don't know what that is, it's the medicine that it can be a medicine you take when you're feeling depressed that keeps you here on earth, ideally, is the plan. Mm -hmm. And so it helps you want to be here, manage um, those feelings, those thoughts, those emotions. And um, he was diagnosed as medicine resistant. That means your DNA no longer works with any of the medicine. So they put him on a few other things. He had some psychotic breaks. And it was really scary. It was one of the darkest times of our entire life. And it was just a moment of like, if we're not good, what's the point? If we're not happy, what's the point? If our family's not okay, what's why are we doing any of this? Mm-hmm. It's great and cool that I've changed thousands of lives, but if I'm not good, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like th- there's no right. point to this. And that really was a breaking point for us because both of us had to figure out what to do. The doctors were like, you have to find an alternative route to managing your depression because this won't work. And so that, and then I was really sick and that's really when we took our health and our healing serious and our health is more than what we eat. It's our mental health, our emotional health, what trauma we've been carrying our whole life, like the limiting beliefs we carry, all of it. And I got to go on a wild journey that I'm sure I'll be on the rest of my life. But like, you know, the beginning of a healing journey is kind of like insane a little bit. It can be beautiful, but like you're seeing things, you're like, oh, this is why I do this. Or, oh, I didn't realize that. And um, it ended up changing my perspective and my life so much that I started in 2020 enrolling in certifications, training, schooling to do this work for a living. I just Mm -hmm. knew after everything I'd seen that I had to remodel my life. I had to remodel my business systems and structures because they were set up to have me hustling the rest of my life. And that wasn't going to work. Being a mom, being a wife, being a human, Mm -hmm. being of service to anyone for my clients, you know, my team. And um, that required remodeling the way that I see the world and the way that I take care of myself. And so I became a trauma-informed coach. I started learning about the nervous system and somatics, and that's how we found breathwork. Breathwork was what saved my husband's life. Um, it's what healed so much of my physical ailments. Um, and I just was amazed at the power of our own bodies and our nervous systems. And that's why if you're in my world now, everything has breathwork in it. If I do a keynote speech, if I talk, I have a certification company called Glow. Like It's just it took over my world because I was like, I can't teach the same anymore. Now that I know what I know, um, everything comes from a lens of understanding transformation and, you know, our own healing and our capabilities to do that. And so it really pushed all, I was already speaking, I was already coaching, but I ended up retiring a lot of my old talks and a lot of my old programs and rebirthing through the framework of what I knew now. And we started getting insane results. Like people's lives were changed before, but they're like being transformed like on every level. And we started getting amazing results. And, you know, my corporate gigs turned into corporate wellness gigs and my keynote gigs turned only motivation, only motivational or leadership based and heart set leadership, you know, heart centered leadership based. And I really started, you know, building wellness programs, not only for our community, but other people are like, could could you come in and help? In Premier, we started a whole wellness initiative and it's just doing so well. And so it just started to bleed into other things and organizations. And I started having people be like, this has changed my life so much. I want it in my salon. I wish I would have had these tools 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, 30 years ago. This would have changed my career. I want my whole staff to feel this, to know this, and to have these tools for self-care where we're literally in the position of being a free therapist all day and we don't realize the toll it can take on us. And it really is a problem of career longevity and sustainability. And that was the biggest fear people would say in safe spaces is, I'm worried what I'm doing isn't sustainable. I love it, but it doesn't feel sustainable. And I'm like, well, it really can be with having self-care tools and a few simple business practices like automation, building a team, assistance, right? All those Mm -hmm. things that 
someone like you or other coaches are all speaking to, but I really was like my space to be in is wellness. Like that's like, I can help in all these other areas, but like, this is where my heart is. And so we, we, we've impacted so many people since 2020 in this specific way, you know, where we were already impacting our community and seeing such amazing results. Um, that we started being like, well, you know what? This needs a proper curriculum. It needs a proper wellness tool and system to be integrated, just like you would train your team and staff on like how to do pricing or how to do customer service or how to do a haircut. We need to have tools on how to take care of yourself, on how to have emotional intelligence, how to communicate well, how to regulate your own nervous system so you can have longevity, so we can be in relationship with each other in this salon in a way that is useful for everyone that's healthy, that has vitality. Mm -hmm. And so we created this program. It's taken us this last January. So January, mm -hmm. 2023, we started this pivot point came to me and said, we're having schools have challenges with what you do for a living. Could you help? And I said, I'm having schools come to me too. Uh -huh. And what's great about they're like, Oh, come speak. It only lasts for a moment. Even, even, you know, I'm going to throw my own stuff under the bus here. Even if you come to Hair Love, it doesn't change all 30 people in your salon's lives. Mm -hmm. It changes you as a leader. So you bring back what you can remember and what you know, mm -hmm. but how can you share it? How can you share that energy and that feeling? And that's what we were like trying to help people with and it needed sure. vitality projects. So that's what we created is it's a proper wellness program, which our industry has never had before, which will be like a yearly wellness membership for a company. And it gives employee tools, staff tools, management tools, all for their well-being and self-care that integrates into the culture of your company. And we created it for schools as well. And we're partnered with Pivot Point, which is a really big deal. I mean, that's going to help us distribute this at the highest quality worldwide. We have some of the biggest organizations bringing this on. Like this literally mm -hmm. is going to change the industry. Like it's kind of crazy and it is very humbling and it has been lots of learning curves on like mm -hmm. being the CEO of something I've, I know wellness, but I'm <laughs> learning a whole other side of business. Mm -hmm. um, and so it took my life falling apart, honestly. And I think sometimes you know, there's beautiful rebirth after our, you know, personal development deaths. And it's, it's okay. Like, I'm so grateful, like how divine that me and Derek came together. And like, all of this has like, it's just, it's perfect. It's exactly how it yeah. needs to be. I, I love, I mean, everything you said, uh, uh, I, I'm really curious about the breath work because you, I, I love the journey that you're on. I love your focus on the health and wellness and changing the world. I know it's going to happen. I've seen the passion that you have with everything that you do and it's contagious. It's very contagious. And, and it, just the way you talk about breath work. I mean, when you say oh, breath, work, breath work to, to me, it, it's just some, you know, it's like, is it like yoga or what does that mean exactly? Yes. And, and then how would I get involved and add it to my life if I don't have access to hair love retreat or um, you directly? Yeah, perfect. That's a great question. So, um, breath work, just like, like you said, like yoga, it's not yoga, but like yoga is a practice, right? Mm -hmm. Breath work would be a practice. So we all breathe all the time. Obviously when you do breath work, it's to do it on purpose. And so there's different breaths that have different, um, functions that will impact you. Like an upregulating breath would give you energy. I call it like an energizing mm -hmm. breath or like, it's like drinking a cup of coffee. It would bring your nervous system into an elated state, an excited, energized state where if you were feeling anxious or overwhelmed, you wouldn't use that breath. You'd use something that's down-regulating or balancing for the nervous system. So why I love breath work and I think every single human on the earth should do breath work is it's free. It's your natural intelligence inside of your body. It's the first thing we do when we're born. It's the last thing we do when we die. Literally, the breath is life. It's our mm. bridge to higher consciousness within. It is like your breath is so important. You look at religions, you look at healing modalities, you look at spiritual practices, they all incorporate mm. breath in some way. Like the breath is like divine. And so yeah. understanding how to use it in your car to breathe mm -hmm. properly throughout the day. And so, I mean, I'm happy to send anyone free resources. There's so much stuff online, even if it's mm -hmm. not our stuff, we have free stuff as well. Um, but even like YouTube, like just starting to use Spotify, I'll send you a few things. Please, like yeah. you can just really start to breathe throughout the day, throughout your nose instead of your mouth. That's a simple one to start oxygenating like your entire system in a healthy way. Starting, I'll give two easy breaths that you can use 
just whenever, however, um, the energizing breath is in through the nose and it's a forceful exhale. (sighs) And it kind of looks crazy. It's (laughs) upregulating. So if you feel anxious, not the vibe. If you're tired or you have Mm -hmm. to show up for people, teach, speak, Mm -hmm. and you're like, I need coffee energy, it's And it like really wakes you up and you would do it with intention. So, you know, intention is what you mean when you do a thing and that will always determine an outcome. And so your intention, your, how you're being intentional. I want to be alive, awake in my Mm -hmm. purpose, whatever that is, you could use music to bring that vibe up where you're, (sighs) 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 where if you're anxious, overwhelmed, stressed, just need to chill. I do this transitioning from work to mom Mm -hmm. is I want a down regulating breath or a balancing breath. And the simplest tool is in through the nose. And then the exhale's nice, long and slow, like you're breathing through a straw. So you would keep that circular. Melting the the body slowly. (laughs) Relaxing the nervous system, allowing that exhale to be nice, long, and slow. (sighs) Using intentionality to, I am safe, I am present, I am loved. (sighs) So you can shift your own energy. I want people to think you're like, you're the energy DJ of your life. You literally... Energy, emotions are energy in motion. They move through, mm-hmm. they're visitors, and you can shift them, move them, literally alchemize them. And so when we understand that life isn't happening to us, but for us, mm-hmm. we realize we are literally the creators of our life and our realities. And our breath allows us to get our body on board with what mind knows. Mm-hmm. We can have mind be like, I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. And our nervous system is like, I'm so afraid and I'm so anxious and I'm resistant and I'm right. And when you can open and melt that nervous Mm -hmm. system in that body, that supports the body in receiving, regenerating, being healthy, not getting burned out because you're not in a stress state constantly. So it's, it's actually very important for our health. Like learning how to regulate your nervous system isn't like a one-time thing. It's like working out. It's something you do to maintain health and well-being all the time. And it helps how you manage stress, how you sleep, how you digest, the clarity. Like you have your access to your own creativity. Like I am very creative, but I'm like on fire since I've started doing breath work. Like your girl's like a channel for creativity. Everyone has access to that type of creativity. And so when we're so in our head, though, we live in such a heady world. Right. And so it's all about learning to drop into the body. And that's heart-centered leadership. What do I know? What do I feel? You know, tapping into those other superpowers that aren't just logic and reason and force and push, but what about flow and ease and magnetism and creativity and community? These are these more like body-led tools that when we bring them into our value system, our ways of being, our ways of leadership – we a can impact more, but we also can do it in a healthier, more vital way. So, breathwork is the best. Everyone should breathe. I love breathe. it. I do love it. it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already more relaxed just from <laughs> focusing on it and taking those deeper breaths. One thing I, I took away from that was that I, th- I think a misconception with breathwork is that it's just to calm down. It's just to get more focused. When it can ab- absolutely do the opposite with the the short quick snappy breaths that will get you fired up. And it reminds me, I was, I'm a certified uh, high performance coach through Brendan yes. Burchard and you mentioned him he's amazing. earlier and, and he's got his, his own way of, of like breath of fire kind of thing. Yeah. Like, breath of fire like is this, a yoga breath. I'm like, that I'm one like, will like, do so the that, same. I'm like, so that makes sense now, you know, and he's like, kind of be goofy all about it and to get you excited before you get on a call or to get that yes. energy pumping. And uh, too many of us rely on, let's just go grab another coffee. Yep. Full of sugar and seven dollars. <laughs> you know, we end up well, not only just, wasting our energy, but wasting our it money. It crashes your hormones. <laughs> That's when I right. learned about my health and like what happened was literally I had been in a stress state. Like a burned out state is when you are in a stress state for too long, which means mm-hmm. fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And what happens is your body, your autonomic system is using all of its vital resources to keep you alive in a survival mode. So A, you don't have access to logic, reason. Um, intuition, 
personal power, you get a little bit of it. You don't get your mm-hmm. full capacity of it, but you also are stressing out the body. So it's functions for regeneration, sleep, all of those things mm-hmm. that we need to be vital are being spent constantly. And then we start seeing things like adrenal fatigue, autoimmune disease that manifest after doing it for too long because the body literally goes, now you have insulin issues. Now you have right. this. Now you have mm-hmm. that because it's it's been on overdrive too long. And so we're supposed to be in a stress state and come back to homeostasis. That's what Mm -hmm. we call balance. Balance doesn't mean 50-50. Balance means like centered. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm safe. There's harmony in my ecosystem within, you know, in my business. And so we need to learn how to have a better recovery rate. I go through something hard. I hustle hard. I come back to center and I recover. That's when we see toxic hustle and things being misused, which I did my whole career. Like mm. I'm, I literally sure. taught people to do it and I had programs on how to be uh-huh. what would crash your system. And so I'm like calling myself out. Like I didn't know any better. It's literally what every boss taught me, what every company I've worked with taught me, what every guru taught me, what every mm. book I read taught me. It was the way to build a business. And I started being like, wait, they're not talking about family. They're not talking about health. They're not talking about sleep. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about recovery. I need a different mentor. I need someone who looks up everything. And so it wasn't until I was sick that I was like, we can't live in that state long term. It's not good for our health. And so how can we build businesses that have more harmony, that support us in these, like, let the pressure out? And how can I build practices and self-care? Breathwork does that. It's like the boiling pot of water and it (sighs) lets the steam out of the body, of the nervous system, of all the stress we're carrying as, you know, space holders, artists, entrepreneurs, people who are taking care of people for a living so we can return back to a more regulated state and our body can actually recover and not be sick or not be burned out or not be tired or not have brain fog. And that's when I was like, wow, once I heal, I need to create a company that can maintain this sort of vitality where I'm still going to work hard. I'm still going to show up and serve, but not where it costs me my health. That's not, Mm -hmm. that's not actually required to be successful. And I think that I didn't know that that wasn't required, actually. I thought it was required. I thought it was awesome and honorable. And I no longer am willing to pay that cost. And I no longer teach people starting at the bottom to pay that cost. I'm like, let's find a better way. (laughs) There's definitely a better way. And so that's why I love breath work. I mean, if I would have had breath work as an entrepreneur like 10 years ago, I probably would have had a lot less challenges, (laughs) issues been less of a scary CEO or been frustrated or lost sleep or fights with my partner or snapped on my kids, wouldn't have had the autoimmune, like a lot mm-hmm. of things. But then you would just be too peaceful and you wouldn't have any great stories. <laughs> then, right. Isn't it all the fuckery that makes for the great book? Exactly. I'm no longer doing yeah. it for the plot though, Ryan. I'm like, I've been, I've been at peace for 20 years and every day is glorious. You're like, okay, But cool. here's, Exciting. here's the thing. It's not like that though. Let's talk about this. Like, it's my life isn't perfect now. I just have right. tools to deal with it. I love it. That's the difference. Like yeah. I have had family issues this year. My mm-hmm. son's going through being teenager shit. Like there's just stuff mm-hmm. that happens. Like it's a Buddha quote. The pain is inevitable. Right. The struggle is optional. Painful I stuff's going to happen. The economy is going to change. COVID's going to happen. Someone's going to die. Someone's going to get sick. You're going to lose your sense of self or identity. Your partner goes through something. But when you have tools to get through it, you can learn the lesson and overcome and grow faster versus letting it right. take you out or make you go through more struggle than necessary. So my life's not perfect, mm-hmm. but I have tools and I know what alignment is. I know what recovery is and I mm-hmm. know how to get the help I need instead of muddling through. And I think that's that's the superpower. Yeah. And I think that that's where a lot of stylists are, are struggling and lost because they, even if they know that they're they're overworked, they're stressed out, they're in a toxic yeah, what environment, do you do? maybe they, they, they just, they might know that's bad, but they don't know what to do to, yes. what, what the solution is. They don't have those tools. Yep. But then once your eyes open to the tools, you're like, oh, I wish I knew this 10 years ago. Yep. Know, same with me. I, I, had, I was all about the hustle culture and same. how you do anything is how you do everything. Let's just go. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead. That kind of yeah, attitude, same. right? Double book. Pff, I'll triple book. Let's just go. Yeah. And then, you know, your whole body's falling apart. You have no time. You're 
Same. dehydrated and you Same. drink and whatever you can to get to pass the time and, and you just you don't really you just don't know any different yeah until you're like oh, i wish i had done that a differently a different way uh and yeah. recently i even just I, I i don't wear my apple watch anymore because it was it was not good for my mental state it was just going off all the time and i'm like yeah. I'm too connected i gotta i gotta like free yeah. myself a little bit so now i just wear my beads I love that. What a cool, simple switch. And I think that's the simple stuff for the stylist listening is like, Mm -hmm. take a moment every morning, Mm -hmm. take a moment on the way home, drink, eat your food, do some breath work, Mm -hmm. have some boundaries, say no. And no, every time tell yourself, I am safe. I am safe to do this. I'm so safe to charge my worth. I'm so safe to say no. I'm so safe to enjoy my weekends and savor Mm -hmm. my life. And like, really, when you build your prices, when you do your things, how does it serve your life instead of you serving it? And then you get to just make art and change right. lives. Like right. that's, that's, I think these simple little things are what's life changing and knowing we have permission to do it and that you can actually still make a lot of money. You mm-hmm. can still take care of yeah. your family. Cause that's what we're afraid of. We're like, am I still going to get the thing I want if I do this? That was my biggest shadow Mm -hmm. was, is everything I built going to crumble? Am I still going to have as much impact? Mm -hmm. I even like my keynotes were all about the struggle and overcoming. And I was like, if I don't have these stories, am I even going to be inspirational? And Mm -hmm. it really took me in deep, like lots of processing to be like, what's more inspirational than ease? What is more inspirational than a life well lived? What's more Mm -hmm. inspirational than someone brave enough to love their life and believe that the better it gets, the better it gets. Like Mm -hmm. that to me is more motivating than than me having to keep going through hard shit all sure. the time to like sure. Sure. get what I want. Like life will take care of that. Life yeah. will give me plenty of opportunities on its own. I don't need to create extra hard, you know? Right. Well, you, as you said, the, the shit's still going to hit the fan. Uh, all on its own. All, all, all on its own. Uh, all and you're, on its you're, own. You're still going to have the struggles. You're just going to be a different person uh, with, a diff- with, with better tools to handle those situations. So it's not always going to knock you on your butt. Yes. Right. It doesn't need to be harder than it needs to be. Yeah. There will be plenty of stuff yeah. that will be challenging on its own. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, it's been an absolute pleasure. I commend you uh, for your openness and honesty and everything that you've done in your life, in your career, and the impact that you've had on everybody else uh, that you've touched, uh, including me. So, mm-hmm. um, And I can't wait to be at your event very soon and, and you at mine. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. We'll see you soon. See you. Thanks for tuning in to Hair Hero. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a five-star review. It helps us reach more listeners just like you. And don't forget to screenshot this episode and share it on Instagram, tagging us at at Masters of Balayage. We'd love to see your posts and share them. Until next time, remember, be bold, be brave, be you. See you in the next episode.